the 15th chapter of Luke, probably the most known passages in dealing with the 99 and the one lost sheep and the woman who looked for her coin that she lost. So let's begin, 15.1. Now the tax collectors and sinners, uh, notorious sinners, if you get in the Amplified Version, notorious sinners, were all gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, Thy a garden consum. It's an onomatopoeic poetic word, uh, and the sound makes the word. Just like our our English word muttered or murmured it makes the sound. It's uh, derived from the sound. So they muttered. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Now, what's in, uh, so unusual? If you had, if you have, and we do here, welcoming Jesus welcomes and eats with them. It means you have the content of fellowship, a fellowship with sinners. Huh. That reminds me of a lesson I learned with Brother Helm in Israel. When he told Joseph Mizrahi why his headaches lifted when we came and he had taken two of the strongest, he was a pharmacist amongst other things, and he had taken two of the strongest pills that were available. Uh, that he could put his hands on for years. But when we came, his headaches lifted. And and Brother Ham, I was in the choir uh, listening to Brother Ham and watching Joseph. We, Brother Ham and I were in the back seat, the driver and Joseph was in the front seat. And he said to him, Joseph, did not hear that your headaches lifted. And he said, yes, they did. They've not been back since. And he said, the reason that your headaches lifted was Jesus needs a head, a body, upon which he can place his head. And uh, he said, when we came, Jesus said, come. And then he had a body to put his head on. And the amazing thing was, Joseph said, pointing to his physical heart, I can tell that in my heart. Boy, I learned a lesson that day. The voice of God can be heard by whomsoever he will. Um, and that was a, a lesson. Now, the fellowship of Jesus. He fellowships with sinners, notorious sinners, and tax collectors. I noticed that tax collectors in my the background work that were not even allowed, or notorious sinners, were not even allowed to give to the alms or give anything to the synagogue. It reminded me of when I worked um, for Demi Hotel in West Frankfort, Illinois. Daddy moved, Mama moved from uh, Portisville, Missouri to West Frankfort for a couple of years before we went to Crossing. And I was, um, I think, in the eighth and ninth grade at that time. I got a job shoe shining and bellhop at Demi Hotel. And, uh, there was a person there who I think rented a room who would, 
he was a safe gambler. He gambled with all his life. And when he, he, he accumulated quite a sum of money, whenever he tried to give to the church, uh, they, re, they rejected it. He, he wasn't able to give. And I thought, even as a young man, I thought, how I that he can't give? Well, the tax collectors here and the notorious sinners were not allowed to give the synagogue also. They were also not allowed to do many things, one of which was testify in the court of law. But Jesus went after them and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, that was the religious leaders, uh, complained this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. My, my, my. He ate in many a Pharisee home. He's, he was invited to, no doubt, because of his notoriety. But he was invited many shapes. And that, and they didn't know they were bigger sinners than the tax collectors and the notorious sinners or the people of the land. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the ninety and nine? In the Greek says in the wilderness, in the open country, and go after the lost sheep until he finds it. Now, wilderness in Luke, Jesus was led into the wilderness. John the Baptist preached in the wilderness. The wilderness is a place where mountains are leveled and ravines are filled up. And a wilderness is a, a place where we make straight so the Lord can come and fellowship with us. <laughs> the 99 were left in the wilderness. And he says, doesn't he leave that the owner of the 99 or the 100? Doesn't he leave the 99? By the way, that is um, probably a wealthy uh, to have a flock of for a hundred is it's I think I think middle class well doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country or the wilderness and go after the lost sheep until he finds it and when he finds it he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home then he calls his friend and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who did not need to repent. Now, for the first time, and I've been preaching since I've been 15 years old, pastored my first church when I was 18, and now I'm 78, and been pastor here for 15 years. Oh, we're going, we're in the middle of our 16th year. Not once have I noticed who is really rejoicing here. And it, though he says, uh, I tell you in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven. That means God's rejoicing over one sinner. I always thought and preached that the, the angels uh, rejoiced. Mm -hmm. They probably did, but that's not what's being said here. It's God rejoicing. He's so excited um, that the shepherd of the under-shepherd, because he is the great shepherd, left 
the 99 at risk in the wilderness and went in search of the one lost sheep. And it was God that rejoiced. Now, or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins. Now, this is unusual and uh, it shocked the audience because the, in the context of this woman, uh, he's saying this is like God. Never in all of Scripture is a woman a metaphor or for God. Mm -hmm. But it, here it is in, here in Luke it is. <laughs> and Jesus said it. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost, lost coin. Schweitzer was preaching on this, the great Albert Schweitzer, missionary doctor, preaching on this, and he heard a boy in the audience say, well, dumb woman, he said, uh, she spent more on the party than the coin was worth. <laughs> he noted that in his <laughs> commentaries. But I tell you, we minimize the rejoicing of God the Father and the angels around him. And then it finishes in the same way. I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I've got a song that the Lord sent singing today, and uh, I'll be singing it, at, and, and it fits right along with the message here. And here's the way I go. When thorny is my pathway, and steep the road and often times i'm sinking beneath my load there is one who watches or me who understands who strengthens and upholds me with my hand i'll just hold on to jesus I just hold on to Jesus. He knows my every weakness. He hears me when I call. He never will forsake me. No evil can or take me. I just hold on to Jesus. And I not fail. I remember when this song came back to me, Pastor Steve and I were traveling together, just entering Charleston. I was under tremendous pressure, and I began to sing this song, and I hadn't thought of it in years. I got out, but we didn't have cell phones, and I called Mama. I said, Mama. This song just came to me. Isn't it one that Daddy sang? And she said, yes. And she got the song for me. Later, she put it in the book of uh, Daddy's songs. And gave, made a book for each of the boys, the whole boys, and uh, gave it to us. And this song was uh, after the eyes. I just hold on to Jesus. Now here's the second verse. I had called my mother to find out the second verse. He whispers and assures me I still am here. Every, every time I falter, I feel in fear. Though often I have grieved him, 
He still is true and promises to lead me life's journey through. I'll just hold on to Jesus. I'll just hold on to Jesus. He knows my every weakness. He hears me when I call. He never will forsake me. No evil can or take me. I'll just hold on to Jesus. Then I'll not fail. Third and last verse goes like this. He's won my heart forever. This faithful friend. The one upon whom always. I can defend. My hand is in his hand clasp, so strong and true. And while he lifts my burden, he lifts me too. I'll just hold on to Jesus. I'll just hold on to Jesus. He knows my every weakness. He hears me when I call. He never will forsake me. No evil can or take me. I'll just hold on to Jesus. Then I'll not fail. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The uh, sinners and the tax collectors remember when Jesus uh, told this, he had a tax collector in his own midst. That was Matthew. And when he, by the way, I shared that murmur in the Greek. The only other place that's mentioned is when Jesus was going to Jericho and uh, Zacchaeus uh, climbed a tree to see him in order to see him. And when he said Zacchaeus looked up in the tree and said, uh, I'm going home with you today. And he said, all, including the disciples, it's all murmur complaint. The same Greek word here. That boy they they murmur. And we have tendency to do that. Mm -hmm. But listen, folks. By the way, when Jesus told this, uh, the thing that had been forgotten was that the Lord seeks out sinners. He seeks. He's the hound of heaven. And they apparently forgot Exodus 34. And the, let me read a few verses from Exodus 34. This, I, I'm not Exodus 34, Ezekiel 34. Now remember the children of Israel were being published, punished. And Ezekiel was carried away about 697, or I think that's right, 597, I guess it was, about 600 years before. And after five years, he was 25 at the time, after five years, God called him to the ministry to be a prophet. And for 22 years, he prophesied. He wrote this in about... 570. And this is what he said. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you, shepherds of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You have not strengthened the weak or heal the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, 
or search for the lost. He has ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth. No one searched or looked for them. Now listen to this. I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. The, 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 let's see this, this left first. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will search. I myself. That's God himself. He was doing that through his son who was God. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on the day of clouds and darkness. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines, and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture. There they will lie down in good grazing land. And there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. Now listen to this, the 16th verse. They forgot this. Because this doctrine of God searching for the lost had been forgotten like Isaiah 53. Now listen to the 16th verse. I will search for the lost. That's what Jesus was doing and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleep and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. In the 23rd verse, I will place, here's where Jesus comes in, in prophet, I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, but David was already dead, and in the tomb. So the son of David, to whom the kingdom was to promise, I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them, he will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David will be prince among them. I will send down showers in season and there will be showers of blessings. They will live in safety. No one will make them afraid. Then they will know that I, the Lord their God, am with them. And they, the Israelites, are my people, declares the sovereign Lord. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the sovereign Lord. And so close the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. My, 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 they forgot that. Because it was, when Jesus said, said that, it was like a shock went through the audience. They, they weren't taught that when he said, uh, uh, in the same way I tell you there's rejoicing presence of the of God over the one who repents. Now, the, in the beginning, now the tax collectors and notorious sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers delivered us to Jesus. The religious leaders, uh, I, I hesitate to say this, but are like this today. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law murdered and muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Oh, he searches out. Ezekiel, who wrote down this five steps, who had been shipped into uh, Babylon, about 597, five years after he got there, God called him 
to be a prophet. So at 30 years of age, he been he preached for 22 years. And finally, in 570, he wrote this down. He said, I look at it. Jesus, we're, we're praying for mercy. We're praying and remembering that thou art with us. And you've searched us out. Even when we've gone astray, you've searched us out. Thank God. Thank God that Jesus and the other shepherds who are like you do this. They search out the law. Like Jesus went and looked up in that tree. Is that there? Is that he has come back? I'm going to your house for a meal. Oh, we used to sing, I'm going to your house for tea. And Zacchaeus was included that day. He was a lost sheep of the house of Israel, a son of Abraham. Father, thank you for searching us out. Thank you that you're like a woman who searched for his coin or a shepherd who has a hundred sheep and will leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one who wandered off and put the eyes on the king. So Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We sanctify this in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Thank you for sharing Praise with us. Praise the Lord. And you've given us a lot to look at, consider here. And uh, I'm marvel, wonder about what uh, rejoicing is like in heaven. Uh, what uh, what it must be like. Yeah, God himself rejoices and throws the party. And the angels gather around. And he's like a woman that loses a coin or a, a, a shepherd that has a hundred sheep and leaves a ninety and nine to go in search of the one that wandered off. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Well, we love you and we'll be praying for you today as you go in. Thank you. Praise the Lord. I love you. And I appreciate you. everybody who's listening in. There is there one. And all of you, as an under shepherd, I regard as the Lord's sheep. And Psalmist has said, All we are like sheep who have gone astray. Every man, every person to his own place. Jesus, thank you for searching us out. Mm -hmm. And we rest in the knowledge, the love of God, the, who is the Good Shepherd. Praise the Lord for every moment. Praise the Lord.